Really, the triploid oyster mixed with the sun, super deflationary on this particular food. So this week's topic of discussion is going to be a little bit different. This week, we're going to talk about inflation and oysters. What it's been like for me dealing with inflation, how my business has handled inflation, just how has inflation changed my day-to-day -day life. So in an effort to reach more people while still spreading the oyster gospel, I figured I'd fill you in on how inflation's affected me and my business over the last six years. Everyone tells you inflation is inevitable. Prices have to go up. That food has to get more expensive. But standing right here, I don't believe that. All because of this. The oyster. I believe this might be the most deflationary food in existence today. For most of human history, prices fell when production scaled. Steel got cheaper, energy got, food got cheaper, until we stopped focusing on production and started financializing everything else instead. We learned how to scale wheat, chicken, corn. Food becoming cheaper is what freed people to be able to start businesses, take larger risks, travel, invent and create new things. The biggest deflationary force in history has been scale not policy. So now let's talk about oysters. Oysters don't need feed. Oysters don't need fertilizer. Oysters don't need fresh water. They clean the water as they grow. They turn sunlight plankton into protein. That's just naturally deflationary. Most food gets more expensive as you scale. Feed costs, land costs, fuel costs. Oysters do the exact opposite. The more you scale, the cheaper the gear becomes, the more efficient labor gets, the less power cost per unit. At scale, oysters will be cheaper than chicken, and cleaner, and healthier too. We don't fight inflation by beating numbers on a screen. Ooh, we fight inflation by scale. For me, I started my business before any of the inflation had started really taking off. Um, we actually scaled almost exactly as money supply was released onto the market. As my business has grown and we have moved more oysters per week and kept our labor costs relatively flat, I've seen this. I've seen the ability to be able to sell more oysters at a lower cost to generate more profit per employee. It's, it's kind of an amazing thing. Now, inflation has been ripping along in a lot of the inputs that we put into oysters. Just this boat that I'm standing on, I built this during COVID and the price of wood plummeted, absolutely plummeted. And that's when I built this boat. Now, when I went to build the second and the third, the price of wood had skyrocketed. And we have just, I guess, been trying to outrun inflation with scale. Inflation has, I think, eaten into our profits, definitely. But it's also been able, but I've also been able to study it as I scale my business and feeling less of the effects of inflation. And I was wondering why, and naturally it was because of scale. I was growing my business at the same time inflation was. So I was able to actually lower my prices. We just had to do because we had to find customers. And our natural progression in this is ultimately to grow billions of oysters and sell them for cheaper than chicken. You gotta have some crazy goal or at least something to point towards in life. Why am I making this video? Inflation exists. I'm making this video because the fundamentals of inflation do not apply to the growth of oysters. If you look back historically, the price of oysters have been based on supply and demand, which is historically always held true. In the early 1900s, oysters were cheap because they were abundant. As supply fell, demand really didn't grow just because people did not have the opportunities to eat them. So supply actually stayed pretty steady until the oyster craze, which has kind of happened in the past five or 10 years, along with everything else. When I started farming oysters, it went like this. Inflation was really weird for us because when I started farming oysters, I made an Excel spreadsheet and I looked at the market price of oysters and the market price for a good quality oyster was 35 cents. So I built my business around it. By the time my oyster was grown, the market price was 50 cents. And I looked at that as a percentage gain and I was like, oh, that's massive. 
Does everybody else know what just happened to the price of the oyster in this area? And as time went on, 50 cents became cheap and the market price of oysters just kept moving up. Well, I built my business around 35 cents and 50% mortality just because I wanted to make sure that it was doable in the worst of times. Well, it turned out that that market price was pretty real. The higher price, the market had accepted it uh, just because the price of everything else had gone up and things just moved along. Also, this industry is kind of like the oil industry in the early 18 or in the late 1800s, 1870s. Prices are everywhere. Depending on who you know, your price is high. Depending on who you, your price is low. And I'm talking 100% price difference. Wholesale, some people are getting 40 cents. Wholesale, some people are getting 80 cents. Some people are getting more than that. And some people are also getting less than that. That is the reality of the oyster situation right now. And I think that is one of the side effects that inflation is having on us. So reading through all, you know, what I stumbled across on my own, that the cure for inflation is scale in any business. You can outgrow inflation. Also, in human history, anytime we've had innov innov innovation, it should naturally be deflationary. Oysters has some very interesting input costs. So we are affected by labor inflation, but labor inflation is relatively stable. If you look at it over time, it's relatively stable. And I guess our biggest factor, the most powerful thing that is growing these oysters is the sun. That sun is being productive and the cost of that does not go up. And that's what I've noticed. I've noticed that. What does it mean for my business? Well, as you've guessed, as you can guess, we're on YouTube to kind of like speak a little bit more about oysters and kind of let people know that they're going to be back. They're back on the menu. And if they're not yet in your area and you're landlocked, reach out because supply is growing. This innovation is the triploid oyster and some of the mechanization that's coming behind it. Really, the triploid oyster mixed with the sun, super deflationary on this particular food. And I wanna put this information out there because if this is an inflationary time, as it's hard to argue that it's not, and people are really concerned about food and food getting too expensive because of input costs that they can't control. They don't know how to make fertilizer and they don't know how to make feed. You have to grow the feed. You need a lot of land. Oysters will be abundant and cheap forever. Look along your coastlines, they're natural. The only input cost is the food and healthy water. So I know that we're getting less healthy places to grow oysters, which could be inflationary, but putting out this information and letting people know that they should protect their waterways because what they're actually protecting is one of the most sustainable, healthy, clean, deflationary foods in existence. I sell oysters every week. As I scale, I do see the price go down. That's deflation. And I think if we applied this mindset to our food supply, we would not be dealing with this inflation cost. This YouTube channel was created for marketing, but I quickly realized that we sell everything we can pull out physically. And what I really more like this YouTube channel to be about is just sharing the information, the magic of this oyster. It's so unique. And I ran into it randomly in life. And so I figured I'd be doing it a disservice if I didn't share. So as we scale, maybe you'll see our oysters in a restaurant, maybe not. But what I'm hoping is that you start seeing more oysters in more restaurants. I've got this little dream of mine that one day they'll actually have a shellfish drawer in every single refrigerator. It'll just be standard. You've got your vegetables, you've got your meat, and now you've got your shellfish protein. And I don't think that happens unless oysters can become an affordable protein. So I put all this information out there to say, steal it. Copy what I'm trying to do it better. That is truly how the price of this goes down. It's not just one company, it's multiple companies. So strategically working together, and I'll be honest, I've got my net worth tied up into oysters. So talking about the price of oysters going down seems like a very stupid line of thought, but I'm smart. I won't keep all my assets in oysters. 
And then if you think about the word net worth, the end of your life, the net worth of your time here, I think a much better net worth than a couple of million bucks is probably seeing oysters becoming an affordable protein. What does a world look like with oysters affordable? It looks like the cost of fertilizer goes down because we're taking less food is being eaten. We're having to consume less chicken and less beef. Less soil is being taxed. There's healthier options, healthier waterways. It's a world I would like to live in. So I say all that to put that into the universe. Next week, we'll be back to regular scuttling videos. But this week, I just thought I'd talk about inflation and I think oysters might be a great weapon against it. But thank you so much for your time. Eat more oysters, anybody's oysters. They don't have to be my oysters. Like I said, we don't have enough for all you guys yet. Get them from somebody else. Another one of these scuttlers. That's another thing. So some of inefficiencies in the market are people call me every week for oysters. People call me every week saying they have oysters. The only difference is I know the price where liquidity is created. And so I think if the oyster farmer could have that in mind, that this is a deflationary food and that it's a sustainable protein and not just some gimmick that we just, the population wants to eat them like that right now, that's fine. But look past all that. And this is a great food that can be affordable. And I've done some experiments and I have sold some affordable oysters. Now, can I scale it? We'll see. But it's gonna be one hell of a ride and it gets me excited. I know this video was a little bit of a weird one, but if you like it, leave something down in the comments. Try and tickle that algorithm. I'm gonna keep uploading videos no matter what, but I think the more people that get this information, the quicker we see some real results. Thanks for listening to my rant. If you believe that food should be sustainable and affordable, subscribe. I'm documenting the experiment in real time.